Tiger fans, what's going on guys? So first off, let me start off by saying happy Labor Day. That's why today's video is on Monday and not Sunday. And it actually worked out really well because of the off day today. Now, I did not get a chance to watch a whole bunch of baseball this past week. I was pretty busy, but I did get to watch some. So uh, this is going to be a report card video, but let's briefly touch on what's currently going on with the Tigers. So this was a weird week because a couple weeks ago I had said watch the Tigers lose two or three to the Cubs, watch them lose two or three to the Astros, and they should go in and beat a Yankees team that is fairly weak and it hasn't had a good offense, and they'll probably get three or four taken from them. Well, such was exactly the case uh, over this past homestand. And that Yankee series, from what I did watch, I listened, I watched bits and pieces of the first three games, and then I listened to the entirety of the fourth game where uh, they won on that walk-off throw, uh, thanks to a good slide. And uh, what a weird series, because the Yankees' bats all of a sudden came alive after basically the Yankees being a doormat team. It was the first time they had won three games in a row since May. That's how bad the Yankees had been. And for the Tigers to let them come in and nearly sweep because Alex Lang gave up a home run to Anthony Volpe in the ninth, a three-run homer with two outs. And the only reason why they won that game was because of that throw. It was about to be damn depressing to see them sweep a four-game set at Comerica Park, a team as bad as that. Glaber Torres absolutely destroyed the Tigers pitching staff this series, mutilized them. Aaron Judge had a homer. I think he had a couple of homers. It was not a pretty series. I think Anthony Volpe had a couple of homers. It was not a pretty series. So then what do the Tigers do? They go out and they uh, win the last game of the series. And then they go to Chicago and mutilate them. Absolutely destroyed them. Uh, I got to watch a couple of these games. So they took the first game of the series, 4-2. to two. Uh, The second game of the series, I didn't get to watch at all. The one they ended up winning 10 to nothing. I believe Reese Olsen pitched an absolute gem in this game. And uh, Miggy had four hits. It was an absolute ass-whooping. And then the Tigers ended up sweeping them uh, yesterday, 3-2. I did get to watch uh, a little bit of this ball game. Uh, Spencer Torkelson had a go-ahead home run. And I believe Torque Baby Torque is up to 25 home runs now. And really good to see his bat come alive. He had, a, he had an absolute great series uh, against the White Sox. And he really needed it because his bat had gone cold. Him and Kerry Carpenter, and we're going to give these guys grades for the month, essentially put the team on their back. Uh, and Andre Lipsius was the September call-up with one other guy, one other pitcher that is like a guy that really wasn't that good in AAA, but he's just bullpen depth. I forget his name. I think it might have been Miguel Diaz. might have been his name. I could be wrong. Uh, but the Tigers did suffer another blow in this series, and that's uh, Riley Green. And Riley Green got put on the 10-day IL because he went and laid out and made a catch in left field, and he ended up hurting his elbow. And it didn't look great because he came up kind of limp, came up kind of like holding his arm, like not trying to put any pressure on it. And now the Tigers are again without Riley Grand. And now it's coming to the time frame where, you know, a 10-day IL and they're going to redo x-rays on it after the 10 days might equal end of his season. And I want to have a little bit of discussion here about Riley Green here in a couple minutes because I don't want this video to be 45 minutes long. But we're going to touch on him and uh, his, his future in the outfield here. So let's get on to it and let's give us a, uh, an August report card grade for uh, the Tigers. And obviously we're going to start on order on the 40 man. All right, so Jake Rogers. Rogers currently right now is hitting 209 with a 281 on base percentage and a 425 slugging. He's got a 90 OPS plus, but he's got 16 homers and 39 RBIs. I'm going to give him a B because, you know, after they let Eric Haas go, he's pretty much been the primary catcher. And, uh, you know, him and Carson Kelly. But, you know, Rodgers doesn't make a lot of contact. You know, he's got 99 strikeouts, only 25 walks. But his home runs have been big this season. And with him pretty much getting everyday playing time and A.J. Hinch not being able to, you know, platoon him as much as he wants to because they got Carson Kelly back there. And Carson Kelly's still learning the pitching staff. And I think he finally had, like, his first lecture base as the Tiger the other day in the White Sox series. So his offensive numbers aren't pretty. But uh, batting average-wise and really on base-wise. But – He's he's done an all-around good job this year for what they've had to do. And speaking of catchers, I want to touch on this. Eric Haas was DFA'd by the Guardians after a couple of days. I think he made it three games. So 
I don't think Eric Cost is down to the Tigers. I think he's going to clear waivers this time, and I am willing to bet he signs a minor league deal with the Tigers. All right, Spencer Torkelson. So he's not going to get an A-plus this month, uh, but he's going to get a, an A-minus. And the reason why he gets an A-minus was he had an absolute month to remember. A few multi-home run games, him and Kerry Carpenter in the middle of the month before they came home on that road trip, uh, for, off the road trip for Chicago, Houston, and New York. They were just taking turns hitting home runs. It was, like I said, it was Spencer Sosa and Kerry Bonds. Those guys were just out there destroying the ball. Torkelson's numbers, I mean, this season, everyone that wanted it was calling him Torkel Bus and everything else and didn't believe this guy was anything good. You know, you look at his numbers now, the average isn't pretty, but, you know, he's leading the team in walks with 61. He's got a 317 on base, a 441 slugging, a 758 OPS, a 105 OPS plus. He's finally above league average. You look at the amount of doubles, he's got 30 doubles, 25 extra base hits. So what's that? That's 55 extra base hits, which is insane. Leading the team in RBIs with 72. Leading the team in walks. This man and Kerry and Kerry Carpenter have been the pieces. And we're going to touch on Riley Green here, him being the, the straw that stirs the drink. But Spencer Torkelson has absolutely had a great year comparative to last year when he was sent down absolute great month he gets an a minus now the reason why he gets an a minus is his defense has been really bad he has had a lot of problems all of a sudden uh getting balls out of the dirt that he was normally getting he's had a lot of problems throwing the balls the balls to bases he's been very inconsistent over there plays he was making he's not making anymore he has a really big problem where he ranges too far to the second base side where he's taking balls away from the second baseman where if he would just stay put the second baseman would get that there i don't know if it's just because he's had so many different second basemen this year and he hasn't been able to get comfortable with anybody and doesn't hasn't been able to get comfortable with everybody's range range because of how many different second basemen have been there but his defense has not been good this year not nearly as good as it was last year he's had a lot of issues there but he still gets an a minus and he did slump off quite a bit toward the end of the month after being really hot for the first half of it but did start to come out of it uh, already early in september so he gets an a minus and yabanez i guess we'll give him a give him a c plus you know he did have that two home run game this month uh for the year he's hitting 244 the 279 on base uh, 13 walks and 56 strikeouts he's got nine home runs and 19 doubles so you know, he's he's playing everywhere. He's been like a Swiss Army knife. His offense isn't going to be anything amazing. Excuse me, amazing for the long term. He's not a piece you build around. He's honestly a piece that, you know, if Justin Henry Malloy and Parker uh, and Cole Keith ever get called up, which I don't think is going to happen this year, and I did, and I do want to touch on them before the end of the video. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing him get uh, get DFA'd, but his defense is pretty good, and you can play him uh, in a lot of different spots. So I guess we'll give him a C plus for the month. Javier Baez gets an F. He's terrible. His playing time has been reduced. His defense is terrible. He's either all or nothing. He's making spectacular plays, or then he can't make the routine play because he's throwing it into the uh, opposing team's dugout or he's hitting paws up in the stand he's dog shit his playing times got cut i'd rather see zach short out there i'd rather see anybody out there than have your bias i'm not even getting into him he stinks nick mayton got sent down he stinks he gets an f okay akil badu <sighs> he's playing a better outfield he can steal bases but he is so goddamn streaky like for the year he's hitting 226 with nine homers and he's got 11 doubles but he's also got uh, 11 stolen bases. But his on base is 318 with an, with an 88 OPS plus. He's just, he's not good. Like, this is, to me, Akil Badu has such Jacoby Jones and Nico Goodwin syndrome where they, they show flashes of what they could be. They show flashes of talent. They show flashes of if they ever could put it all together. But the issue is they can't put it all together. And I don't know if Nico Goodrum has, has a, is a, is a tender candidate next year. I really, this upcoming season, I just don't know. You know, with all the outfielders that, you know, they don't really have a true third baseman coming up in the system. And they're trying to put Colt Keith and Justin Henry Malloy out there to try to get them at bats in the big league level to make them more defensive, you know, give more defensive versatility. Because apparently, you know, no matter how good their numbers are down in AAA, uh, and like I said, we are going to touch on them here before video end, they're never going to get called up. Because uh, Scott Harris still doesn't think that they're ready for the big league level defensively yet at all, all facets of the game. Because he called up Parker Meadows because, you know, he was – 
ready to contribute in all facets of the game, which we've seen. I mean, that dude plays a great center field. He can steal bases. He's a good base runner. He's, you know, he's can hit. So Justin Herman Malloy and, and Cole Keith, their bats are definitely ready, but I, I just don't know how long they're going to keep them down there uh, from what Scott Harris said until they're ready to contribute to all facets of the game. I don't think their glove is ever going to be ready to contribute in all facets of the game and or, or their speed. You know, they're, they're solely hit first guys and you're and full of a team of guys that, you know, only have a guys that are, are actually offensive everyday contributors. So when you got guys down there, like, I guess now is a good time to get into it. Uh, Justin Henry Malloy for the season, he's got a hundred walks to 128 strikeouts, a hundred walks at the minor league level. Do you know how insane that is? For a minor leaguer, his on base is 431. His slugging is 513 with a 942 OPS. He's hitting 293. He's got uh, 23 home runs, 24 doubles. I mean, you're closing in on 50 extra base hits with a 431 on base. And now Colt Keith, Colt Keith was one of the minor league players of the week. For Toledo, he's got uh, 10 home runs now. He's hitting 305 with a 376 on base and a 924 OPS. He was struggling and striking out a lot. You know, now let's see what he's got for strikeouts. Wise, he's got forty-one strikeouts to twenty-five walks. So you know, he's starting to get there. He's, he's starting to repeat what he did at Double A. But Scott Harris went and talked about that. He doesn't want to start calling people up, and the reason why that those one of those two guys wanted to do September call up because he wants to contribute at all facets of the game. But I don't understand what what more they're going to do when you know neither one of these guys are a true third baseman and you're putting him in the outfield. Which brings me back to my point of a kill, but do now you have to start making cuts. Now you have to start figuring out who's actually part of your future and who's actually going to be here. And like guys like Andy Banez and and Park uh, not Parker Meadows, but a kill, but do like even Nick Maton. Like these these are these probably aren't guys that are that are going to be there. And it doesn't matter their defensive versatility. If your bats are as terrible as their bats are, and they only give you a couple of good weeks a year. Who gives a shit? You know, they're not worth putting on your 40-man roster. And the biggest thing was, was uh, is the Tigers didn't want to have these guys lose rookie status because if they win rookie of the year, they get a draft pick for them. So that was the whole reason why they had held them down uh, when they had called up Parker Meadows. So that was that there was that deadline day somewhere in August. So I don't know. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't know what more they have to show with the stick because I don't think they're ever to contribute defensively. But you have to see how much is it going to offset. How much is their offense going to help them versus what their glove is never going to bring? You know, where where do you consider it enough either or which way to say, okay, well, their glove's never going to help. But they don't really have positional flexibility, but they contribute so much on uh, offensively that they're going to hit through their d- defensive liability. So where where's the cutoff for that? Like where do you need to be defensively for for them to get called up on a team full of guys that really you know we only have a few good hitters, which brings me to Riley Green. So Riley Green really struggled toward the back end of August. Uh, I'm he still gets he's gonna get a, a B plus because he really helped Parker Meadows when he came up uh, figure out center field fast. Uh, you know, he's made good, he, he was making good plays on left and right. He's really striking out a lot though. Like he's got, uh, 114 strikeouts, only 35 walks. His on base is 349, which is outstanding. Uh, 874 OPS. He's got a, a, a 116 OPS plus. So he's been great, but the Tigers need to, to really work with Riley Green and make do like essentially what the Nationals did with Bryce Harper. And I said this last year when Riley Green first started playing center field that him diving all the time is going to cost the Tigers more games than it is him not diving. Everyone used to bitch about how Austin Jackson never dived for balls in center field. Austin Jackson played a lot of games. Austin Jackson was never really injured ever as a Tiger. They need to really work with Riley Green and tell him, listen, we're really happy you want to go out there and make Superman dives. We're really happy you're playing 100% every single play. And we're really happy you're out there contributing to your team. But you are worth more to us playing 150 games and letting an a, a extra base hit happen in a game where you're, you're winning the game. And I think there was maybe an out of the inning versus now he missed, what was it, five weeks already with that or six weeks with that shin issue that he had had from uh, center playing center field. And now he might be done for the rest of the year. 
And this is coming from, you know, like last year, he had gotten hurt diving for a ball at, at Angel Stadium where he missed four games because of it. You know, the broken foot thing was a, was a weird thing. You foul a ball off your foot, it is what it is. But, you know, people want to sit there and shit on Torkelson and call him Torkel Bust. He's played a lot of games over his first two years. I mean, he's had 135 games played. He's leading the team. He's been in the lineup almost every single game this season. He's been there. Now, I get it's a little bit apples to oranges because one guy was playing center field primarily for the most of the year, and he just now got into the corner. And I get one guy plays first base, right? But at the same time, Riley needs to learn to stop diving all the time. Riley needs to learn that situational awareness. Outs, score, meaning of ball game. It doesn't always necessitate going out there and diving for a freaking ball in the fourth inning when you're up five, you know, which wasn't the case. They were up one when he made that catch, and it was like in the seventh inning. But now he's going to be potentially gone for the entire season, and he's only at 99 games. He hasn't even played 100 games in a season of uh, a season yet over his first two years. You know, I think he only played like uh, 93 or 94 last year. So that's something going forward that Riley Green needs to really work on because, like, they need his bat. He is such a massive catalyst, and he is such a massive piece to the overall team. Like, when he goes, they go. He is massive. He's super important. So that's one thing that he's going to have to go forward with and just really work on diving only when it's absolutely 100% necessary. So, all right, Gary Carpenter. This guy gets an A++++. Absolutely murdering the ball. My guy, he's got 20 home runs, hitting 289 with a 352 on base, 522 slugging percentage, 874 OPS, and a 135 OPS+. plus. The Tigers have found a diamond in the rough in this guy. And I want to bring this same point up, and I'm going to keep beating this dead horse about this because Scott Harris is pissing me off, not calling up either Malloy or, or quote, Keith. All we heard last year was, is Kerry Carpenter has no defensive position. Kerry Carpenter is a long-term DH. Kerry Carpenter does not have enough of an arm to play outfield every single day, which he has proven to be absolute fallacy. Because now, even though he's not the greatest corner outfielder, he has proven that he can at least almost at an average pace play that spot, and his bat has hit through every defensive deficiency that he has, which brings me back to my last fucking point of if you have hitters that could potentially hit better than the trash that you have in your lineup, where is the fucking breaking point? Where's drawing the line of you're defensively okay-ish enough that your bat is going to hit through your defensive efficiencies? Because Kerry Carpenter is star point one a that someone that can hit and someone that can hit well and someone that can hit consistently doesn't matter if he's really good defensively because he hits enough. Imagine this Tigers lineup without Gary Carpenter this year. Absolutely abysmal what this lineup would look like because you are losing one of your most consistent and best power hitters that you've had all year. Which is why I am just still flabbergasted that those two guys are in Toledo and we're going on the second week of September, and there's only a couple of weeks left of the season. And one of those two guys was in the September call-up. And you have all these other guys that you're still giving at bats to. But Gary Carpenter, what an absolute monster he's been. All right, Mickey Cabrera, we're going to give him an A uh, for the month just because it's been fun. He's been just slapping the ball over the place. He had a four-hit game the other day. He's just been getting a lot of a lot of slap singles, a couple of occasional doubles. He hit a he hit a couple of home runs this past month. Uh you know, he's going into his last month ever, uh last full month ever as a as a professional baseball player, uh getting ready to retire from his Hall of Fame career. He went and passed Gary Sheffield this past month for home runs. He's passed Tony Gwynn. He passed the, uh, I think George Brett. So, he's climbing up. So we're going to give him uh, an A just because it's been fun to watch him uh, complete his retirement tour. Uh, Zach McKinstry, you can get an F. He stinks. He had a home uh, a home run finally when they were down 17 to nothing against the Astros. He had a few more extra base hits. He's got almost 20 doubles, eight home runs, but he stinks. Matt Vierling gets an F. He stinks. He hasn't had any extra base power since the Dolls Lair break. He's been absolutely horrible. Uh, Zach Short will give a C2. I will give him a C plus because 
he did have a, a big home run the other day, I believe, against the Yankees uh, when they had to keep him from getting swept. He's been very good defensively wherever the Tigers have put him. His offensive numbers aren't pretty, but, you know, as a guy that's designed as a platoon player uh, and can play defensive, a bunch of different defensive positions uh, fluently, he's, he's been good enough. Okay, so Parker Meadows, for his debut, because he's, he's only played 13 games, I'm going to give him... An A minus. So so far he's got eight walks of fifteen strikeouts, which is fantastic. I was worried he's going to strike out too much. He's sitting two eighty nine with a three ninety six OBP, so uh, a one thirty OPS plus. Again, fifty three plate appearances. These numbers are liable to change very quickly. He's got uh, let's see one triple, two doubles, and a homer. And one of those homers, that homer was a walk off home run. Uh, I love what I'm seeing from him so far. Absolutely a guy that you get to, his plate approach so far has been really good. Such a really nice swing. Very compact. Uh, gets to the ball quick. Uh, legit power. I mean, legit power. And he just covers ground in center field. You know, people talk about why Riley isn't a center fielder. Just watch Parker Meadows. The jumps he gets, how fast he is, how easy he makes balls in the gaps, to, uh, getting balls to the gaps versus like Green, where like he's got to dive for a lot of those balls that Parker Meadows just runs to. I mean, it's a big difference. He's been absolutely great. Okay, so now let's look at the pitching staff. Uh, Eduardo Rodriguez, he'll continue to get an A. He's been good so far uh, this entire year. He's coming in on his last month as a, one of his last months as the Tiger because he's going to opt out. Uh, <laughs> Joey Wentz made a couple spot starts. He's absolutely terrible, so he gets an F. Reese Olsen. Okay, Reese Olsen has been super up and down, but, man, I am still so high on Reese Olsen. His, his stuff... He has got this this sinking two seam fastball to go along with his this little straight four seam fastball. He sets up his 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 curveball and slider so well with that because he's able to front hit pitches and he's really able to bust right handers in and he opens up that outside of the plate. I mean, he can strike some guys out. He had six strikeouts in two innings against the Yankees. He was absolutely dominant. He had a great start again uh, against the White Sox. He was fucking good. I really like Reese Olson, so we'll give him a B. Uh, overall for the month. His numbers don't look amazingly pretty. He does have a 465 ERA and 79 and a third inning pitch. He's been great. Matt Manning, he gets an A. All of a sudden, Matt Manning is pitching uh, with his fastball. His sliders have been better. His, his curveball's been better. Uh, he's not just going up there every time, just trying, trying to throw uh, chase breaking balls. Oh, oh, he's actually attacking with his fastball and he's maintaining his velocity. He's been really good his last few starts out. So he's going to get an A for the month. Alex Lang, man, command seems like it's cleaning up, but he has given up the gopher ball. Uh, I honestly think uh, Andrew Vaughn kind of broke Alex Lang this year. When he gave up that walk-off grand slam in Chicago, uh, Lang is, has never really been the same since after winning reliever of the month. So the bullpen as a whole, I'm going to give a B to because gopher ball is starting to show up a little bit more. Uh, leads have been blown a little bit more consistently, but these guys were pitching out of their minds, and these guys have been pitching a lot of innings overall. Like Jason Foley didn't give up his first home run of the season until the other day in Minnesota, and they had had you know hit the first two of the year. Like same with Tyler Holton, like he had been really good, and he gave up a couple of home runs. But Alex Lang has just had a real hard time getting like the third out of certain innings, particularly the ninth, and he's had a real hard time keeping the ball in the yard because he's up to what? How many home runs he's given up? He's given up four home runs so far this year, and they have uh, been really meaningful every single time. But he's got 42 walks in 54 innings, which is insane because like you look at someone like Jason Foley, he's only got 13 and 58, or like Tyler Holton, who's got 17 and 70. So he's had a real hard time. He's still leading the bullpen in strikeouts, though. He's got 66 strikeouts. Um, uh, quickly, I forgot about Tarek Skubal. Tarek Skubal, he's been another one that's had kind of an issue giving up home runs. Uh, he's either really dominant or he's kind of, like, shaky or he just gets lit up. He's 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 having a hard time, like, it seems like, just finding, like, games, like, where he doesn't have his stuff just to get through it. He's either mowing everyone down or, like, he's struggling to get through four or he's having a blow-up start. But we'll give him a B. Uh, it was he had got hit in the leg with a ball this month. We was hoping he wasn't going to get you know put on the injured list. Like Matt Manning had an issue with back, spasm, back spasms, hoping he wasn't going to get put on the injured list, and he didn't. So 
<laughs> bullpen as a whole will give him a B. I still really like Brendan White. I still really like uh, Bo Brisky. I do like Will Vest, even though Will Vest has been shaky lately. Jose Cisnero got uh, re put on release waiver, so he's gone, uh, which kind of blows my mind because he had had that month of June where he was so good and he just felt, he just completely fell off. So that's really about it because I don't want this to go to be a forty-five minute video. So overall, a weird week. You know, they lose. What was it? Four straight, then win four straight. Offense all of a sudden destroys the White Sox, and you know they come to life. And they, they I think that's got to be their first four game winning streak since May. It has to be. I don't know that for a fact. If someone watching this in the comments wants to correct me, it's got to be their first four game winning streak since May because uh, they hadn't had one in a while. Uh, coming up, they go to New York for three, and then come home to end the week against Chicago for three. The Tigers this year have mutilated their division. So uh, I think they're 28 and 15 against their division this year, which is absolutely outstanding. If there's one thing you can hang your hat on for thinking of some kind of forward progress is, you know, last year they weren't that they were mediocre against their division. And this year, you know, if they if the Tigers can go in next year, hopefully let some of these guys who are pushing a triple A up and help, you know, see what they can do to contribute to the big league level and get another bat or two that is an actual like proven bat if you can win in your division who you primarily play the most and just improve a little bit against the east and west you know you're you're gonna be an above 500 team but you can't go and play the al east and al west and get smacked as bad as you have because like watch them go to new york and get swept after winning four straight and then then come home and take two or three from the white Sox, a team they've absolutely destroyed but i don't know because the tigers have played oddly well this year on the road i think they're like almost a 500 team on the road this year so they've played oddly well on the road but they've played really bad at home which doesn't make any any freaking sense so let's see if i can find their home road splits here real quick they're 29 and 40 at home and 34 and 34 on the road. So they haven't played the division that well and they haven't played, you know, or they've, they've played the division that well, but they haven't played at home that well, but they haven't been able to beat any other division besides their own. So I don't get it. This past month, they went 13 and 15, which was their best month since May when they went 16 and 11. So they were close to a 500 month uh, and they're three and zero to start September. But, you know, now they're without Riley, probably for the rest of the season, because his elbow inflammation. And, you know, maybe they call up Justin Henry Malloy or Colt Keith. I'm not holding my breath about it. I'm tired of bitching about it, to be honest with you. But I'm just tired of, of seeing, you know, these guys that don't deserve at bats. And Scott Harris spe specifically said that he had at bats earmarked for younger players this year. And, you know, you got these guys down there. It's not like their numbers don't necessitate getting called up. He solely said in that interview that it was because he doesn't think they can contribute to all facets of the game. But Kerry Carpenter is point one, one a like you can you guys can hit through their defensive you know liabilities, and I think these guys could too. You know, and I'd really like to see them for the last three to four weeks of of ball games. Instead of watching Akil Badu get more playing time, who doesn't deserve it. Instead of watching Zach McKinstry or Andy Abanez. Like, what do these guys have to prove on this roster? They don't. They're not a part of the future. And you got these guys down there that are ripping the fucking cover off the ball and destroying it. So I don't get it. But overall, you know, it was a better month. It was absolutely outstanding to watch Torkelson and Carpenter absolutely blossom this past month and seeing that power. And Torkelson already come into Chicago. You know, everyone's like, "Oh, Torkelson's zipping off again. He's gonna be bad. He's already he already hit, hit a couple home runs, a few more doubles. He looked better, you know, overall. So it was it was a fun month in that aspect of it. I'm definitely worried about Riley. Uh, hopefully, he's not out the remainder of the season. <sighs> yeah, and like we have to watch Tyler Nevin, but I don't know. We'll see. So that's all I got for you guys today. I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, appreciate everyone who comments. And I will be back next week. Have a good one. Go Tigers.